Suppose you wanted to find the density of that odd looking shape. Here's one way of doing it. You weigh it using a spring balance or a top band balance, that's my attempt at a spring, spring balance. And then what you do, you lower it into a Eureka can. And what happens is this Eureka can, as such, has got a, a little spout at the side. And before you lower it in, the water is filled up to this point here. Just there. And as the solid object is lowered, it displaces an equal volume of water. You may think, well, that's a okay way of doing it. The trouble is, it's not as accurate as you might think. Because of surface tension, you find lots of liquid gets stuck along the tube itself, and it's not really very accurate. So what we're going to do, we're going to use Archimedes' principle to find a way of determining the densities of odd-shaped objects and of liquids without actually having, having to measure the volume at all. So we go over that problem. And here's how you do it. You don't have to worry about this. We take that bit out. We just use a can. We lower the solid object into the liquid. Now, as we've seen from an earlier fizz cast on buoyancy, there is a buoyant force up. And that's equal to the apparent loss in weight and the spring balance. If you look at this very carefully, what I'm going to do is a thought experiment. It's a bit odd, but it's my thought experiment, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove the solid object, remove the solid object, and I'm going to replace it with liquid that's the same as the liquid in the container. Now, you know, and obviously in real life it would just intermingle, but because it's my thought experiment, the liquid I'm putting into that shape stays where it is. It doesn't mix with the rest of it as though like, like the unfriendly neighbours. When I look at this, it's now liquid in the shape, liquid outside. That liquid in the shape is simply floating, if you want to think of it as being like that. If it's floating, what's the result of force on it? It's um, zero. That means that the buoyant force must equal the weight of that liquid. In other words, the buoyant force equals the weight of the liquid that's displaced by the solid object. So Archimedes' principle could be stated as when the body is immersed in the fluid, it appears to lose weight. The apparent loss in weight, the buoyant force, equals the weight of the fluid displaced. Now, how you use that to get the density of the solid is not for this fist cast. But that's that principle you need. And the same principle, if you know the density of the solid, you can actually get the density of the liquid. At no time do you measure volumes. All you need to do is measure the apparent loss in weight. If you know the density of the liquid, you can find the density of the solid. If you know the density of the solid, you can find the density of the liquid. That's not quite the complete version of Archimedes' principle. Suppose I was to take the same thing again and only allow it partially into the liquid. Okay. I'm not going to bother to do all the spring balance again, because it wasn't very good to start with. There's still a point of force here. There you go. May not be the same as the one before, but it's operating. Now I can do exactly, exactly the same thing. Yeah. What I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this part of the solid object and replace it by water. This water is floating, so I don't even need this. I don't have to think about that. Whoa, lost myself. Go back again. Yeah. There it is, that bit. The buoyant force, again, is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced, even though it's only partially submerged. Now, I can use principle in full then says, when the body is immersed in a fluid, totally or partially, it appears to lose weight. The apparent loss in weight equals the weight of the fluid displaced. 
Now, some people argue, oh, well, when you replace that solid with the, with the, uh, with the liquid of the same shape, there's no buoyant force change. No, it doesn't. It can't do. After all, the buoyant force is being, being applied by liquid that's surrounding the shape. That's not smart. Liquid's not smart. It doesn't know. All it sees is the shape. It doesn't care what's inside it. The buoyant force will be the same for both, irrespective of what's actually contained inside that shape. There's something else that you will come across too, it's really very interesting, is when you have something floating, like that, maybe a bit of wood, and you say to yourself, oh, I can make the pins, but here we go again. When the body is immersed in the fluid, partially, oh yes, partially here, um, not totally, it appears to lose weight. The apparent loss in weight equals the weight of the fluid displaced. Now, how much weight is that solid lost. Give you a clue, it's floating. Of course, it's lost all of its weight. So the apparent loss in the weight is all of its weight. So all of the weight of this solid equals the weight of this amount of fluid displaced. Say it again. The total weight of that equals the weight of that fluid displaced. And if you go through the process, and we're not going to do this here because we're not going to do the full details of Archimedes Principle, it works out beautifully that if I know the thickness of that, and I know that height, uh, that thickness there, and that height, I can calculate the density of the solid if I know the density of the liquid. Or, if I know the density of the liquid, if I find the density of the solid, density of the solid, I can find the liquid. Either way, all I have to do is use a ruler, but find that's a nice regular shape. Archimedes Principle, beautiful. Man was a genius. This has been a Swinburne production.